All right, in all seriousness, uh, you did talk about average rates of change versus instantaneous rates of change. In the first section, you come back around to it in the last section because it's a really important thing that you look at most of the year in calculus here. Uh, what you first learn about average rate of change, you don't realize it's average rate of change when you learn about slope in grade 10. That's the slope formula. Sometime later, you learn this little triangle means change. So if you're talking about the average speed of something, change in distance over change in time. That's what its average rate of change is. Or change in y over change in x. So if you had, if you had two functions and they looked quite different, but you wanted to know their average rate of change. So let's draw a tiny little graph in here. And we'll say if you have one function that's, that starts there, let's say at 1, this is 2, and at 5, this is 10. How about that? And let's say you have one function that goes like this up to there, and you have another one that uh, goes like this up to there. They, different things are happening for those two functions, right? If that was a distance time graph, they're, the trips are definitely different, right? The blue one would be going pretty slow at the beginning and then speeding up at the end. The orange one would be kind of the opposite. But the average rate of change is the same for the two of them. The average rate of change is just what's the slope between them, right? The average rate of change is just tell me the change in distance and the change in time. So it's this and this, right? This would be change in, if this is y and x here, right? Change in y, change in x. The average rate of change doesn't matter what the curve looks like. It just matters what the change that happens is, right? So we can look at this specific thing here, this function, x cubed minus x. Find the average rate of change there. Now, if you, all you really need is you need four points for this. You need, now this is an interval, right? Interval 1 to 3. So x goes from 1 to 3. y is going to go from whatever f of 1 is to whatever f of 3 is, right? And then the average rate of change is whatever f at 3 is minus whatever f at 1 is over 3 minus 1, right? Or in other words, what is f of 3? Can we just do that in our heads without doing a whole long song and dance about it. 3 cubed minus 3 is something like 24. Does everybody agree with that? And f of 1, if you put the, if you put the 1 in there, 1 cubed minus 1 is 0. And you got 3 minus 1 is, I'm going to leave it like this because I can't do so many calculations in my head at once. 3 minus 1 is quite difficult. 24 over 2, or in other words, 12. That's the average rate of change between those two points. Essentially on a graph, this is what I want you to link now, is I want you to link that with what it looks like on a graph. Here's the graph. I'll go back to the other thing in a second if you want to get some of that. This is that function, right? Uh, x cubed minus x. And let's uh, move these points here for a second. We want to know now from one up to 3 here. That's what we just figured out, right? The change in y was 24. The change in x was 2. That's all you're doing is average rate of change. If you, um, what we're going to move towards now in calculus is talking not about average. Those kind of things you learn about in grade 10 and 11 and stuff, but when you want to start talking about instantaneous rates of change and instantaneous slopes, that's where we're moving with this, right? That's where we're moving as we move through into more calculus concepts here and we did already start to talk about it but before we start getting into that you need to understand average rate of change is just the slope between two points right slope between those two points okay so let's go back to this um, if you draw the graph of the function what does the average rate of change over the interval give you it gives you the slope between those two points Okay, in other words, between 1, 0, and 3, 24, right? It's the slope between those two points. The average rate of change is that. It's the slope between two points.
All right, so we have average rate of change. Now we're going to move into talking about instantaneous rate of change. <laughs> the instantaneous rate of change is, you're going to see, is the slope of a tangent to a curve. If you're in grade 10 and somebody asks you to calculate the slope of a straight line, so they say, what's the slope of that? If you had a grid, you can figure out what the slope is, right? But if someone says, um, tell me what the slope of this is, well, now, now you might say, well, I don't know. If you don't tell me, I guess I want to do average rate of change, average slope. But you can talk about the slope at a point. You can talk about the slope here. What does the slope look like it is at about that point? Kind of looks like almost zero, right? Or here it's pretty steep, or here it's going downhill slightly. The slope at a single point is going to be the slope of the tangent line. So we're going to look at slope of a tangent line and how we find it. How we find it is going to be, sort of intuitively how we find it is going to be, if we want to find the slope of a tangent line, say at 2, well, there's lots of things you could do. A good approximation, the slope of the green line is almost the same as the slope of the red line right now. They're almost the same. A good way to approximate it might be to just say, I'm going to go from, if I want the slope of 2, I'm just going to look at the average from 1 to 3, and maybe it's approximately right. And then the closer I bring those points, the closer it's going to be. All right? If I go about an equal distance on one side and the other, it might be about the same. It's not going to be exact. But now that we know something about limits, it doesn't matter what we do. What we're going to do is we can either put one of the points on top of there, and write an expression for the slope between the two points and then take the limit as we make the distance between the two points smaller and smaller. And it doesn't even matter which side you go from here. If I go from the other side, right, let's say I put this point on there and then I say I'm going to take the limit as I go closer with this. If you take the limit, you get the same, the slope of the tangent. That's how you're going to get it. We sort of started alluding to that at the beginning, but now we're going to write an expression for that. Okay. If you take if you if you if you write an expression for the slope between two points, let's say we want um, at this point a I don't know. So we have some function here that looks like this, and we want the slope at. Let's maybe make it a little simpler to know what we're doing here. If we want the slope at a, we want to know the slope of the tangent at that point there. So we want to know the slope of that. The way you're going to do it is you're going to write an expression for the slope between A and another point on one side or the other. Not necessarily on the right. I'm going to say A plus H is here. H is the distance in between. H is that. But it could be on the other side because H could be negative. If I just write this expression, F of A plus H minus F of A over A plus H minus A, that's the that's the average slope. But if I take the limit, if I do the limit of that as what happens? As h approaches 0. If I do the limit as h approaches 0 of that, limit as h approaches 0 of the average slope, what does that give me? If you collapse the two points together, if you make the distance between them less and less and less, you get the instantaneous slope. Or in other words, you get the slope of the tangent line. Okay? Slope of tangent line at A, at x equals A. Okay? The slope of the tangent is going to be the limit of the average slope between two points where one of the points is at the point you're looking at, okay? Let's say it might make more sense to you when you do a specific example if it's not making sense right now. If we want to find the slope of this thing at, at, at this x squared at the point 2, 4, because I'm pretty sure you all know what the graph of that parabola looks like. Let's get some axes here. We only need the positive because we only care about that side right now. It looks something like that. Now at the point 2, 4, maybe we'll make it a bit steeper. Okay, that's half of, 
that's half of this. This point right here, so we want this tangent line right here. This is two, this is four. Slope of tangent at two. Slope of the tangent at two, if you want to use a variable for that, you can. If I just write the expression for the average slope between that point and some other point, right? This it might be on this side, two plus h. It might be on the other side, two plus h. Oh, that's not good. Oh, come on. Okay, it doesn't matter which side it's on. It might be on one side or the other, but we want to know the function value at two plus h. And we want to know the function value at 2. That's the difference in the y values. And the bottom, we're just going to have 2 plus h minus 2. That's not the slope of the tangent yet until I do what to that expression? Take the limit as you push the two points together as h approaches 0. Now it's the slope of the tangent line. Now I, I know what the specific function is, right? It's x squared, so I can work with this now. So I'm actually going to work out what those two things are, right? So if I write down what those are, this is the limit as h approaches 0 of 2 plus h squared minus 2 squared, right? Over, can I work out what the bottom is? What's the bottom? The bottom's just the difference between the points, which is just called h, right? 2 plus h minus 2 is just h. If you do some algebra on that, you'll get somewhere with this. Until I evaluate the limit, I have to keep writing limit of h, limit as h approaches 0 of this. Can we square this out without too much struggle and pain and agony? Thank you, unidentified student with no name. I appreciate that answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Frank. <laughs> um, if you uh, if you do that now, you can you can work it out. Uh, what does this give you? H squared plus that over this, right? And we still, I'm still not evaluating the limit yet. Why couldn't I just evaluate the limit right at the beginning? Why couldn't I sub this number in at the beginning? Because this is, you can't divide by zero. But you can figure this out once you simplify this. This, the way this definition is going to work is when you start with something like that, you're going to be able to simplify it. This is h plus 4, right? h plus 4, is it not? h plus 4. Now can I evaluate the limit? I can sub the number in, right? I can say that I'm putting a 0 in plus 4. Notice this is where I stopped writing the limit of this, right? Because I'm actually evaluating it by substituting the number. Once you actually sub the number in, you stop writing limit of. I've actually figured out what the limit is. It's what now? What is it? 4. That's the, that's the slope of the line at that point. Okay? So let's uh, look quickly at the graph here, maybe. Until I push this, is it? Okay, so if we want the slope at 2, right? That's the slope that we want. The slope of that thing it says over here is 4. This is the equation of that line, 4. Again, what we were doing is we were saying we're putting one point on there, and we're putting one point close, and then we're just pushing the point closer to that, right? So that slope. These, these differences are getting less and less, but when you, when you divide those, they get closer and closer to what that line is. That's, that's uh, what you're doing when you're finding the slope of the tangent. You're going to find in the next that the name of this thing, when you talk about the slope of the tangent line, the slope of the tangent line is called the derivative. The derivative of a function is, the derivative of a function is going to be another function that gives you the slope of the tangent line anywhere on the curve. So that's why we're, uh, that's why we're spending all this time talking about tangent lines and slopes and everything. Okay, because that's where we're headed. Does that make sense to you?
Okay, slope of a curve. Slope of a curve here, you notice this is what I just wrote for you, more or less, right? Slope of a curve at a point. That's that definition. Okay, that's that definition that we wrote before. The difference in the y values, the difference in the x values, and then the limit as the difference in the x values gets closer and closer to zero. All right? That's the slope of a curve, slope of the tangent line. Are you okay with that? Yes, no, maybe? Yes. You think so? Awesome.